Well, as it's approaching the end of the month and there's no milk floatery on scene tomorrow, I thought it was time to do a roundup of the milk floats I've driven in January and issue them with awards like Top of the Pops type chart show type thing um, in order of, uh, well, normally things are ranked in order of uh, brilliance. In this case, they're ordered in rank of uh, mediocrity from the least mediocre to the inane and, quite frankly, dire. So, uh, it's been a month of five milk floats for me. Um, that's more than one a week. That's a lot of milk floatery going on. Um, and started off with uh, in fifth place, which is technically the best place to be in this chart, um, but nevertheless isn't particularly good, is the Porsche Taycan 4S, um, merely because... It's the least crap of all of them. Um, and also because I got to do this analogy with Jeff Boy's cars. Yeah. So by the time I finished with it, I came to the conclusion that driving that Porsche Taycan is just like being in a lap dancing bar. Right. You're surrounded by everything you love and you know you can enjoy in life, <laughs> but you can't. That is a fantastic... In fourth place, the VW i3. And don't get me wrong is shit, but it's less shit than the other ones. So, uh, you know, it's hardly a glowing recommendation, but nevertheless, it is what it is. And uh, in order to prove how mediocre it indeed was, I compared it to its petrol cousin, the T-Rock, and interviewed myself, because I just happened to be driving a T-Rock at the same time. So I was able to interview myself in the ID3, interviewing myself in a T-Rock to compare the two, so, first of all, I compared the cost of them. So, uh, how much is yours? 29 grand. Hey, That's 11 grand cheaper. That's like 33% more for this thing than yours. And then secondly, I compared the range on them. Maybe it's all in the range. I've got a range of 167 miles on a full charge. What have you got? 500 miles on a full tank. So as you can see, it's uh, it's not going very well for the ID3, but I suppose it's still one place ahead of third, which goes to the Ford Mach E. Never ever call it a Mustang, as I show here. Got a Ford Mach E. Can't bring myself to call it a Mustang. It's an insult to the word Mustang. It's just bang average. Bang average, and if that's you, you can't use that and the Mustang word in the same sentence. It's fucking blasphemy. So don't ever do it, Ford. Never do it again. The fat man has spoken. It's not a Mustang. Um. Anyway, back to uh, what's in second place in the uh, list of things, and uh, it's my good friend, the Kia Soul. I mean, this thing is awful in so many ways that it's very difficult to uh, sum it up succinctly. So I'll just pick two. Um, and yet again, I plucked an analogy out, um, very similar to the Taycan one, actually, but at the opposite end of the spectrum. And it went like this. The analogy I'm going to use straight away, right to start, is 10 to 2. You're in a nightclub. You're hanging. You see a bird from the side and you think, gee, looks all right. You walk over to her, she turns round, you see her from the front, and you think, well, I'm here now. And then you see her from behind, and then you get cab out by yourself. However, that paled into insignificance when I got inside the bloody thing and found what comes next, the crowning turd in the water pipe, to quote General Cecil Sir Hogmanay Melchit of Blackadder, um, was the air conditioning? Yeah, before any of you milk floaters say, oh, it's yes, but if you've done, no, it's bollocks. Look, look, I can control the range on this car with this fan. Look, oh, there we go. Down, up, down, up, down, up, down. Look. But, despite the Kia doing that, it still didn't even come close. I mean, this is five, four, three, two, one in my January 2024 chart of milk floatery, but 5432, 
They don't even come close. They're not fit to lace the boots of what's in first place, which is the absolutely disgusting Mercedes Vito E van. Now, you could go into a field and you could find a pile of crap. It'll probably be cow crap. And you could probably find quite a lot of it if you go into a field with a lot of cows. But you will never find the steaming pile of dung that is the Mercedes Vito E unless you go somewhere where they collect dung for quite a long period of time and allow it to build up and steam and ferment and smell like shit, look like shit, act like shit and be shit. That's how bad that van is. <sighs> Makes me mad just talking about it. But then it could be worse. You could be sat inside it and you could be pressing the sat nav button and this could happen. I'll tell you what, let's have a go at the sat nav, shall we? That's right, it's a compass. We've got the 2024 in the world of car navigation and Mercedes decided to go back to 1873. A bloody compass. Who am I, Captain Pugwash? But then, who cares where you're going? Because to get there, you've got to keep the heaters off. As I proved. So we're now in a situation where I've got to freeze my tits off. Which so there can... you have it. January 2024, milk floatery, mediocrity of the year award goes to the Mercedes Vito E. Five vehicles, collective value, £250,000. That's quarter of a million quids worth of gear I drove there. And all of it, in fit for purpose. What? I mean, I say future my arse, but this really is future my arse because these things haven't even got an arse. It's just unbelievable. 250 grand's worth of cars and you can't even find a decent one because the, the heaters in the take hand were broken. So I never got to put them on. That's why it went back to Porsche and I left that bit. <laughs> I left that bit out. Um, so the heaters in the take hand were broken, so they didn't work. The other four cars, you couldn't turn the heaters on anyway. It's minus one outside. It's January. Now, I don't know if you've noticed, we live in Britain. Well, not all of us. Hello to all my American fans. About 20% of you are American. And I know some of you live in cold bits and some of you live in hot bits. However, in Britain, we mostly live in cold bits from end of October, beginning of November to about March. About five months. About 40% of the year, you're going to need to put your eaters on, probably more than that. So if you said 50% of the time, you have to have your eaters on in your car to be comfortable. That's 50% of the time, you're going to be pissed off in a milk float because you can't, because you've got a choice. You can either turn the eaters on and not go so far, or you can turn the eaters on, have warm feet. Now I've just said that, I'll forget that bit. I should edit that out, but I'm not, I'm going to leave it in. You've got a choice. Here we go, live editing. You can turn the heaters on and not get home, or you can leave the heaters on, freeze it off. That's twice. Don't make me do this a third time. Right. You can either leave the heaters on and not get home, or you can turn the heaters off, get home, but get home with frozen feet and frozen tits. That's the choice you've got to make in January 2024 in Britain with milk floats. As a fat man says quite a lot, Future my arse.